we are going to build a node-based flow editor using SolidJS. It will be able to add nodes with the number of inputs and outputs of your choosing, create edges to connect the nodes with the click and drag motion, drag the nodes around, delete nodes and edges, and even zoom in and zoom out and drag the board around. If you feel lost while watching this video, you can follow along by downloading the code of this project from my website. Links in the description down below. By the end of this video, you will have the basics to start building your own flow editor. So let's get started. Okay guys, so we're off to a good start. It seems like I've lost my face camera footage for the installation process. But basically what you need to do is open a new terminal and navigate to your preferred working directory. In my case, it's projects. Create a new folder with the name of the project, in this case, flow editor, and open it in code. Now open up a new terminal and type in the following command to initialize a TypeScript version of SolidJS. Let's go ahead and install everything. And let's start the development server. If you click the URL, it will open up a new window on your browser with SolidJS working. And now what we can do is actually just clean up a little bit of the project so we can get the baseline to start building our flow editor. So start by deleting the app and the app module CSS. And on the index.txx, let's just remove the import from the app and actually just give it an header for now, saying hello. And now we have everything we need to start building our flow editor. We will start by creating the board. So go ahead and create a new components folder and create a new folder and let's call it board component. Inside this folder, we're going to create an index.tsx file and the styles.module.css file. So for the board component, let's first create the component itself. For now, it's a simple div with the ID board wrapper. Let's go ahead and import this from SolidJS. And we can already also import the styles that we're going to use for this component and give it a class name of wrapper, like so. Going back into our main index.tsx file, we are going to import the board component and just render right here. Like so. Going to the styles of the board component, we are going to style the wrapper, which will be a fixed element covering the size of the screen, and it will be scrollable so we can drag the actual board around. For the board itself, we are going to create also another simple div with the ID board. This board will have two classes, one for when it's fixed and another one for when we are dragging the board around. We can simulate this by creating a new signal, and this will tell us if the user is actually grabbing or not the board. Now we can go ahead and give the board class two classes. So if it is dragging or if it is not. Going back to the board styles, we can create our two new classes and they will basically be the same size of the wrapper itself, but with a background of dots. And this is represented here by the background size and the background image, which creates a radial gradient with with the dots itself, uh, kind of a gray color. The only difference between the board and the board grabbing is the cursor itself that changes from grab to grabbing. So as we can see here, now we have the dots itself and this will have the wrapper element, which is the parent element, and then the board itself, which we are going to drag around. Let's begin by creating the zoom effect on the board. And for this, we are actually going to need three event handlers on the board itself, which is the on mouse down, up and move. So this is triggered every time the mouse is clicked, de-clicked and it's actually moving. So go ahead and create these three handlers. And the next thing we're actually going to need is a scale value to know how much the user has scaled from the board itself. So go ahead and create a new signal and call it scale and just initially put it a value of one. To actually trigger and change the scale, we need to know when the user either zooms in or uses the mouse wheel. So to do that, we can create a new event listener wheel and we'll attach it to the board once the code is mounted. Go ahead and import a new function called onMount. This will trigger every time the component is mounted on the DOM. And let's get the board element by getting the element by the ID. 
And if the element is present, simply add an event listener wheel. And what we are going to do is actually update the scale based on the delta difference on the wheel, multiplied by some kind of variable to define the velocity of the zoom. Also restrict the scale to be between one and two, so we don't have too much zoom in or zoom out. And finally, apply the transform on the board element itself based on the scale uh, defined by us and also change the margin top and left so that when the user zooms in or out, it actually deviates a little bit of the board so it stays inside the screen. By going to our application, if we now do a scroll on the wheel, we can see that it actually zooms in and we see by the scroll bars that they are changing size because we are actually transforming the whole board itself and amplifying it and de-amplifying it while we scroll this, the wheel. Now, to take care of the dragging of the board, we first need to know where the user clicked on the board the first time. So the X and Y position relative to the screen. To do that, let's create another signal and let's call it click position. So we know where the user clicked. On the handle on mouse down board, we are going to set two signals. The one that says if it is grabbing or not, we're going to set it to true and the click position will be the X and Y value we get from the event once the user clicks on the mouse down. Once the user lifts up its finger from the mouse, we want to set the click positions to minus one because that represents that it didn't click anywhere and we want to set the grabbing to false. When moving the mouse, we want to check if the user actually clicked somewhere represented by the click position X and Y being of positive value, then we first need to know the delta X and the delta Y, which represents the difference between the first time the user clicked on the screen and the current position of the mouse moving. We need to get the board wrapper element. And if it exists, what we want to do is scroll the parent element, the wrapper, by the amount of delta that is currently in the mouse movement. In our application, if we now zoom in and click on the mouse, we can see that it changes the styling of the mouse and we can actually drag around the board. Now let's go ahead and create a new component responsible for the action buttons of adding nodes and deleting nodes. To do that, again, create a new folder with the name of your component. Let's call it buttons component and create an index.css file and a style.module.css for the styles. Now go ahead and create the component itself. And unlike the board component, we are going to define a new interface for the types of the props of this button component. This component will have three props. So the show delete Boolean, which represents if we want to show the delete button or not. The on click add event that will be triggered every time the user clicks on the add button and will input the number of inputs defined by the user and the number of outputs of the node. And finally, the on click delete event listener that simply is triggered every time the user clicks on the delete node button. So this wrapper component will have mainly two buttons, the add and the delete. So we can define them by the button tag. And the classes for the delete will be dependent on whether we want to show the delete button or not. So this will trigger the button delete class or the button delete hidden class which will be responsible for applying the CSS styling to be hidden. And once we click it, we simply want to call the onClick event that we get from the props so that the parent component knows when the user clicks on the delete button. These buttons will be icon based. So what we can actually do is go to this website, solid icons and type the icon we want to use. And by clicking on the icon, you have this SVG option, which you can click, and then it will copy onto your clipboard the SVG element. Now simply paste the SVG elements for the delete and for the add button. And let's go ahead and style our component. So first the wrapper class, which will be a fixed element on the top of the screen, and it will flex the items to the end, represented here by the flex end. And it will have the none pointer events, so it doesn't overlap with the click events on the board itself. Now for the add button, we are going to do a little round button with a purple color, give it a little bit of a shadow, 
and finally give it a transition. So we have the hover effect we are going to show you now or once hovering on the button. So add a hover effect and this will simply change a little bit of the background and give it a little bit more of a shadow effect. So it has the effect that's coming out of the screen and also apply a little bit of scale. So it grows a little bit once it's hovering the mouse on the button. Finally, when the user clicks on the button, let's just simply transform it smaller. So it has the effect that the user is actually pushing the button inside the screen. Let's do the same to the delete button with the only difference being the background color being red. And now for the actual class for when the delete button is hidden, it's the same as the delete button itself. The only difference it's, it, it has now a transform translating the Y to the top. So it disappears from the screen. Going back into our board component, let's import our newly created component and let's put it right on top inside the wrapper. Don't forget to import it. And for now, let's just leave it the show delete to false. And we are going to need two new event handlers on handling the add and delete node button. So go ahead and create those handlers and don't forget that the handle on click head will receive the number of inputs and outputs you define for the node. We can go ahead and already create a new signal, which represents if the user selected a node or not. This is seen by the fact that it can be null or a string. The null represents that the user is not selecting any node and the string represents the ID of the current node that is selected. We can use this new signal to show or not show the delete button by doing so. So if the selected node is different than null, then there is in fact a node selected and we want to show the delete button to delete the selected node. As we can see on our application, we already have the add button. We don't have any delete button because we don't have nodes yet. We will do that in a second. And the only thing that's missing is the dropdown to actually select the number of inputs and outputs we want to create the new node. Going back into our buttons component, we can create our dropdown by creating a new div for it right on the bottom of the second button. And what this will have is first, two classes, either if it is open or not. So if it is open, it will be the dropdown class. If not, it's the dropdown hidden. And it will have two labels. So for the number of inputs and number of outputs and the input itself being each one a number with the value of the signal of the number on of inputs we are going to create right now. And then a handler to actually change these values every time the user clicks on a different value. Finally, there's an add node button, which will be the one responsible for triggering the parent event handler on having a node. Let's go ahead and create this new three signals. One for knowing if the dropdown is open or not, and the other two for the number of inputs and outputs we want our node to have. Now create the handlers we are missing. So the one for adding the node, the other for changing the number of inputs, and the other one for changing the number of outputs. Changing the number of inputs, it's going to be very simple and straightforward. We simply want to set this new signal with the actual value that's coming from the input. For the outputs, it's exactly the same thing. So go ahead and set the number of outputs based on the target value that's coming from the input. To add a node, we first want to do a stop propagation on the click event because we don't want to trigger the board uh, click events every time the user clicks on the add button and this will stop the propagation to do so. Next, we want to validate the number of inputs and outputs. We don't want to have, first of all, negative values. That doesn't make any sense. And we want to limit the number of inputs and outputs to four. So we don't have too much inputs on each node. Finally, we want to close the dropdown. So every time the user clicks on the add button, it will close the dropdown. We want to trigger the parent on click add event. So the parent knows that the user wants to create a new node and we'll pass in the number of inputs and outputs that are stored on the signal. And finally, let's just reset the signals by putting zero on the inputs and outputs. One thing we are missing is to actually open the dropdown and we are going to do so by adding an on click event 
on the add button with the icon itself, not the one from the dropdown. And the correspondent handler will be, uh, first of all, a stop propagation because again, we don't want to trigger the board events and just set the open of the dropdown to true. That's it. Now for the styling of the dropdown. First of all, we are going to make it an absolute div and we're going to place it right beneath the add button icon. Give it a little bit of a shadow, a panning, a white background. And for the hidden CSS, it's exactly the same as the dropdown. The only differences are the transform. So we're going to push it a little bit to the side, give it a zero opacity so it disappears. And also remember to disable the pointer events. So even if it is hidden, it doesn't trigger the events on clicking the dropdown. For the labels, we're just going to put a little bit of color and size. The inputs will have also a little bit of shadow and change a little bit of the colors and the font size. The button to add the node will be very similar to the other buttons, except that it will not be fully rounded. It will be just a little bit rounded on the edges. And finally, let's give it the same effect we did with the other buttons to this new add node button. Now we can see if we click on the plus sign, it will open the dropdown with the number of inputs and outputs we want to create our new node. When we click the button, it disappears the dropdown. The only thing we are missing is that if we open the dropdown and click anywhere else, it should also close the dropdown, which is not currently doing so. To do this, let's go into our dropdown div and add a solid.js directive, use click outside. This directive is responsible for triggering every time the user clicks outside the div itself. The only problem here is that we actually have to manually define this logic of clicking outside. So we are going to create this new function called click outside. We can do so at the top. And the only thing that it's going to do is attach a new click event listener on the body, on the document itself, and on cleanup. So every time the component is unmounted, it will remove the event listener so we don't have a memory leakage. The logic of clicking outside of the element itself is represented here by saying that if the element does not contain the target itself, then trigger this function. Finally, let's create the handler for, for when the user clicks outside the dropdown. And this will be simply uh, set open to false and set reset the number of inputs and outputs so we can have a fresh new values every time the user clicks on the dropdown button. As you can see, we now open the dropdown. If we click outside, it closes the dropdown. Okay, so. For the nodes, let's do the same as we did for the other components by creating a new component folder, call it node component, and create the index and the styles using an empty div for now. The node component will also have a specific set of props, so let's go ahead and create an interface for it and add it to the component interface by doing so. So the props that we'll be receiving for the node, first, it's the ID of the node itself, then we are going to need to know the X and Y position of the current node, the number of inputs and outputs the node contain, a Boolean value that represents if the node is selected or not to change the styles accordingly. Regarding the handlers, we will start with the on mouse down node. This will be triggered every time the user clicks on the node and it will receive the ID of the node that was clicked and the event. Next, we'll have the on mouse down output and it will be triggered every time the user clicks on the output of the node and it will give us the X position and the Y position of the output as well as the ID of the node that was clicked and the index of the output in the current node. Next, we have the on mouse enter input, which will be triggered every time the mouse enters one of the inputs and it will give us its X and Y position also, and also the node ID that's corresponded to the input and also the index of the input itself. Finally, we have the on mouse leave input, which tells us that the mouse has left one of the inputs. It will give us the node ID of that input and also the index of the input. So let's begin with the styling of the node itself. It will have two styles. The node select if the node is actually selected, which is represented here by the props value, and the node styling if the node is not selected. 
we then will apply a transform on the styling of the node based on its X and Y value coming from the props. Finally, we will have an on mouse down trigger event that will stop again the propagation so we don't trigger the board events and trigger the on mouse down node from the parent passing in the ID of the node itself and the event. Now we are going to have a wrapper for the inputs and inside this wrapper we are going to define the inputs itself. This will be made with the for loop that's coming from SolidJS and it will create an array based on the number of inputs that the node contain. And it will simply create a new div for each of the inputs. And for each of the new inputs, we are going to create a new reference. And this will be passed in on the mouse enter input. And I will explain why in a bit. And finally, the on mouse leave that will trigger the handle mouse leave handler. So for the handle mouse enter input, what we want to do is tell the parent on the position of the input and the ID of the node and the input index. The input and the index we already receiving from the handler itself and the ID of the node, we can get it from the props. Now, the thing is we could pass in the position of the input based on the event. So the event could give us the X and the Y of when it enters the input, but we don't want that because we what we actually want is the center of the input. And to do that, what we are going to do is from the reference of the element itself, we can get the client rectangle. And from that, we can get the value of the position relative to the screen on the left. And we can get also the position on the right of the element. And what we want the center to be is the position of the element in regards to the screen on the left, right? So we have the node here and we want this position on the left plus plus the distance between the right and the left, which is represented here by the right amount minus the left divided by two. This will give us the center position of the actual input. We do the same thing for the I coordinate, but using the top and the bottom. And we now have the center X and Y of the input, which we can pass on to the parent. For the handle mouse leave input, it's very straightforward. We just want to call the parent on mouse leave input with the ID of the node and the input index. Now for the outputs, it's going to be exactly the same thing as it is for the inputs. So go ahead and create a wrapper for the outputs and then a for loop with the array of numbers of outputs and the a single div with the reference of the output and the handler for when the user clicks on the output itself. So this handler will be very, very similar to the mouse enter input. First of all, we are going to stop the propagation so it doesn't trigger the board events. We are going to get the center X and Y of the output the same way we did for the input. And we are going to call the parent on mouse down output, passing in the position of the output, the ID of the node and the index of the output. For the styling of the node, we will start with a simple white square with a little bit of shadow, giving a hover effect by making the shadow bigger and give it a new class for when the node is selected which will be identical to the node, except that it will have a border of orange so the user has the highlight that the node is actually selected. Don't forget to have the over effect also when the node is selected. And then the inputs wrapper will be a absolute div. So the position is relative to the node itself. And we are going to align it on the left side of the node. And for each of the inputs, it will be a small orange circle. We are also going to add the crosshair cursor. So the user knows that the mouse is inside of the input and we are going to enable the pointer events because we are currently disabling it on the inputs wrapper so that every time the user clicks on the wrapper itself of the inputs, it doesn't trigger the node events and we actually don't want to do anything of that. So that's why we disable the pointer event. The outputs wrapper and the output itself, it should be the same as the inputs, except that on the wrapper, it's going to be adjusted to the right side. Now, going back to the board component, we are going to create a new signal representing the nodes that are stored on our system. So go ahead and create a new signal and it will be an array of the type node. Now, 
bear in mind that this is not getting any error because there is a type node on TypeScript, but we don't want this one. We want to create our own interface for this. So let's go ahead and create the interface. So in the node interface, we are going to need, the first thing is the ID, which will be a string. Then we'll be needing the number of inputs and outputs that the node contains. And now what we need is to know the current position of the node and the previous position. And we could do that using an object, having the X and Y coordinate uh, with the number. The problem with this approach is that every time the user moves the mouse, it will have to render all of the nodes because we are saying that this is basically an object. It will be updated and this will be inside a for loop. So SolidJS will have to re-render all the nodes inside the for loop just for this single update of a position of a single node. What we can instead do is use the accessor of SolidJS and the setter of SolidJS to get the current X and Y of the previous position and to set the new X and Y of the previous position. This way we have a more granular reactivity and SolidJS will know to only update the position of this node without re-rendering the whole nodes inside the for loop. So let's do the same now for the current position of the node. And now that we have our node interface and our signal with an array of that, those nodes, what we need to do is go ahead and go to the board. And inside the board, we are going to render a for loop with each of the nodes. So go ahead and import the for loop and import our newly created node component. So again, it will have the ID of the node, the X and Y position of the current position of the node. And this is represented not only by the current position attribute on the node, but as you can see, we get the X value from this position. And this way, SolidJS knows that it's going to update only this node. Finally, the number of inputs, outputs, and the node is selected if the selected node is equal to this node ID. And finally, let's just have the handlers for the node. Let's start by creating a new node every time the user clicks on the add button. And we will do so, first of all, with a random X and Y position. So we can set the nodes on the random position every time the user clicks on the add button. We are going to create the two new signals for the node current and previous position by defining the X and Y with the newly created random. And finally, we are going to update the global array of nodes by setting the new nodes with a new array with the copy of the previous value that's stored in the signal, plus a new object with the node ID that will be a random uh, ID, the number of inputs and outputs which we get from the onclick add event, and the previous and current position, which will be an object with the get and the setters of the signals we define right here. So now if you click on the plus sign and just assign a number of inputs and outputs, once we click on the add node, it will create a random node on the random position with the number of inputs and outputs you defined. To make the node draggable, we are going again to the handle on mouse move that's triggered every time the mouse is moving inside the board. And if the user in fact clicked somewhere, let's first say if it is on the nodes. Otherwise, if the user did not click on the node, it clicked on a board, which is something we already made. So let's put it inside this else over here. And inside the selected node, so if the user in fact did click on the node, first we're going to get the deltas from the current position of the mouse. Then we are going to find the node variable inside the global arrays of nodes. And if the node exists, we are just simply going to update the node position by doing a new set on the current position with the X and Y value of the previous position plus the delta of the new mouse position divided by the scale of the zoom. So we have a definite position based on the current scale that we are defining. Finally, on the handle on mouse down nodes, we are going to select the actual node based on the ID we get from the event. We are going to update the user's click position to the position on the event on the mouse down node. We are going to find the node variable on the global array of nodes. 
And if the node exists, we are going to update the previous position of the node to the current node times the scale. This is so that every time the user clicks on the node, we know that the position we want to drag the node to is from this new previous position we just saved and the delta on the mouse movement. On the handle on mouse down board, don't forget now to add the deselect of the node. So every time the user clicks on the board, it deselects the current selected node. So now if we click on the plus sign and add a random node, we can drag the node around. And if the user clicks on the board, it deselects the node. And if the user clicks on the node, it selects the node appearing the delete button. So to delete the node, first we're going to find the node itself on the global nodes array. If it doesn't exist, we do nothing. We just return this function. And finally, we just remove the node from the nodes array by filtering the array of nodes, which the ID is different from the currently selected node. And finally, just set the selected node to null so we can deselect the node itself. So if we now click on the plus sign add the random node and just click on the node itself and click on delete, the node disappears from the global array. So now for the edges, do the same as you did for the nodes. So create a new folder for the component with the index.tsx and the styles for the components. But this time, instead of having a div, we are going to add an SVG element for the edge component. Now for the props interface, first we are going to have a boolean to check if the edge is selected or not. We are going to have another boolean is new that represents if the edge is actually a new edge that's being created or if it is one that was already created. The position is going to be an object with the X and Y coordinate of its initial position to its end position. It's going to have an on mouse down edge event click. And finally, another event click on click delete edge. So if the user wants to delete the edge, this is the event that's going to be triggered to the parent. For our edge component, we are going to create an SVG and it's going to have a certain path inside that SVG. So go ahead and paste a path and let's start with the class. So this path is going to have a few different styles based on the type of edge that it is. So if the edge is a new edge, meaning that it's a edge that's starting to be created, then it's going to have the edge new. Otherwise, if it is an edge that is currently selected, then it's going to have the class of the edge selected. Otherwise, it's going to be a regular edge. So for the data points of our path, it's going to be, uh, first of all, the first position, it's going to be the X and the Y coordinates that we get from the props. And then we are going to have the second point on the middle distance between the first position of the edge uh, to the end position of the edge. So we want it to go from the first point, which is the first position, to the middle of the first and final position. And then finally, the final point, it's going to be from that middle position and to the final position of our edge. Now add the on mouse down event listener and add the handler for that event. So we are just going to do again a stop propagation so we don't trigger the board events and just simply call the on mouse down edge from the parent. Now for the styles, the SVG itself, which has the class wrapper, it's going to fill the whole screen and we are going to disable the pointer events because we just want to enable the pointer events on the actual path of the edge and not the SVG itself. So for the edge class, it's going to activate the pointer, pointer events. We are going to give just a little bit of a gray color to it, a, a, a little bit of stroke width and a, cor a cursor of pointer to actually know that this is a clickable event. If the edge is selected, it's going to be exactly the same thing, except that it's going to be orange and it's going to be a little bit thicker than if it is not selected. If it is a new edge, again, it's going to be also the same thing, except it's going to have a little bit of opacity so we know that it is a new edge that's being created. So going back into our board component, we are going to create a new signal and it's going to be called new edge. And this edge, it's an interface that we are going to create and it's going to have the following property. So the first one, it's the ID, which will be a string. 
The next one, it's going to be the node ID from which it is starting the edge. The same for the end node, the index of the input that it's coming from the start node and the output index again for which output it's going to go on the end node. Now, much like the node, it's going to have a current and previous position, but it's going to have for the start position and the end position. So let's go ahead and create one for each. So the previous start position, the current start position, previous end position, and finally the current end position. And we have our hedge interface. Now what we want to do is scroll down onto the components itself, the rendering, and below the for loops for the nodes, we are going to say if there is a new edge, meaning the user clicked on one of the outputs and is going to create a new edge, then let's go ahead and render our edge component that we just created with the selected false because it is not selected with the is new to true because yes, this is a new edge that's going to be created. The current positions of the starting and the end points of the edge and for the on mouse down edge and on click, let's just leave it blank because we are not going to be need those events for the new edge. Okay, so to now actually create the new edge signal, we, as I said, want to create it when the user clicks on the output of a specific node. So go ahead and go to the handle on mouse down output we have already created. And first thing we are going to do is, and it makes sense, to deselect the current selected node if the user clicks on the output. So now we are going to create this new edge by setting the new edge, and we are going to give it an ID of nothing because it's not technically created yet. And we are going to say that the node will be the node ID we're getting from the handle on mouse down output and the output index also coming from the props. Again, the node ID for the end node, we don't know yet, so we're going to leave it blank. And we also don't know the index for the input because the user hasn't yet selected an input. So let's put it just minus one. For the positions, we are going to create now the signals for every position on the edge. So for our signals, we are going to create from the output position X and Y we receive from the props of the function. And don't forget to divide it by the scale because we want it to stay fixed to the current scale the user is currently in. Now, we are still going to have one problem uh, regarding the positions of the edges because if the user so decides to zoom in and then drag a little bit more of the board, we have the current edge position relative to the screen itself. And we don't want that. We want it to be relative to the board. So what we have to do is say that the current edge position, it's going to be from the output of the node plus the current crawl of the X and Y of our board wrapper. So what we can do is actually get the board wrapper element. And if it exists, we are going to execute all of this logic. Now, what we simply have to do is add the scroll left and top to each of the X and Y positions respectively. Finally, what we want to do is update the current end position of the edge. And as long as the user is still clicking on the mouse and moving the mouse, this end position of the edge will be the current mouse position. So going to the on move mouse event listener, at the bottom, we can say that if the new edge is different than null, meaning that the user is setting a new edge, we are going to get, again, the board wrapper element so we can get the scroll offset and simply update the current end position of this new edge with the current mouse X and Y coordinate with the scroll offset divided by the scale. Let's not forget that if the user so decides to lift the finger from its mouse, we are going to set the new edge to null because the user does not want to create a new edge. Back in our application, if we now click on one of the outputs of the node, you will see that it will create, in fact, a new edge with a little bit of gray with low opacity. And if we take our finger off the mouse, it will simply just delete the new edge. What we now need to say is if the user, in fact, 
drags the edge inside of an input and lifts its mouse only when inside an input of a node, then we want to create this new edge and add it to the global edges array. Now, to know if the user is with its mouse inside of an input or not, we are going to create a new signal and we are going to call it inside input. And it's going to be of the following type. So it's going to be an object with the node ID of the input that it's currently in and the index of the input, as well as its X and Y position. Or it's going to be null, representing that it is in fact not inside of an input as of now. So you can go ahead and in the beginning define it to null. Now going down to our two event listeners on handling the enter input and leaving input. First on the enter input, what we want to do is simply update our signal by doing a set inside input of the node ID, the input index, and the X and Y position of the currently selected input. If the user leaves the input with its mouse, we just have to check if currently there is an old node ID and input index, and if they are the same, then yes, we are going to set it to null. We can scroll now to the top, and like we did with the nodes array, we are going to create a new global edges array. Now on the handle on mouse up on the board, we are going to update it because as of now, if there is this new edge, we simply say that we want to set the new edge to null. But actually what we want now is if there is a new edge and if the user lifted his finger from the mouse on the board, then yes, we just want to set the new edge to null. Otherwise, if it was inside of an input, we want to add this new edge to the global array of edges. So update this by saying we only want to update this if it is a new edge and it is not inside of an input. Otherwise, if it is a new edge and it is inside of an input, then we want to create this new edge and add it to the global array. We start by getting the ID of the nodes and we can get on the start node from this new edge that we created and the end node from the inside put signal with the node ID. Now we just need to fetch these two nodes from the global nodes array. Don't forget to get the board wrapper element so we can get the scroll offsets for the positions. And if we do have both nodes and also the board wrapper element, then the first thing we want to do is update the IDs of these new edges we are going to create inside the nodes itself so we can then later use that information to do some more efficient calculations. So what we can do is if we scroll up onto the node interface, we are going to add this new two attributes, which are the input edges ID and the output edges ID. Both are going to be an array of strings containing the ID of the edges we are going to associate for each of the nodes. So first we are just going to fix this on click add because now it's asking us to give this new two attributes we just created. So let's go ahead and create the two signals containing empty arrays for now and simply put it on the new node object. Back in our handle on mouse up board, we are going to update these new IDs respectively for the node start. We want to update the output edges ID with this new edge we are going to create and the node end, we want to update the input edges of this new edge. We do so by setting this new array with the old values that are already there and create a new string with the ID of the edge that it's going to be simply the edge underscore the ID of the node starting from and the output index as well as the ID of the end node and its input index. Once we updated the edges IDs for each of the nodes, we are going to update now the previous and current end position using the X and Y position of the input itself, as well as the scroll offset and the proper scale. We must not also forget that we need to update the previous start position of this new edge to the current start position. Now to add the new edge, we're simply going to set the new edges with all of its previous edges already stored on the signal. And we are going to add a new object with all of the properties on this new edge object we just created, as well as updating the current ID of the edge we defined earlier. 
and define the ID of the node that is going to end on and the input index also. Now to render these edges, we are going to go down onto the component itself and we are going to add a new for loop for all of the edges on our global array of edges. And for each of the edge, we are going to render our edge component with, for now, the selected uh, to false, the is new is also false, and the positions will be the current start position and end position of the edge itself. And again, for now, let's just leave it the event at listeners blank. We are going to take care of that in a minute. And sorry, I also forgot that on the handle on mouse up board, once we add the new edge, we actually have to also tell to deselect this new edge and put it to null. So going back into our application, now if we click on the output and simply drag into another node input, you see that it changes style because we are now creating a new edge. If we do again on other outputs to another input, Again, it will create this new edge. Now, what we are missing is if we drag the node around, we can see that the edge stays on the same position. So we have to update the edge position every, every time we drag one of the nodes. So to do that, we are going to go to our handle on mouse move event. And the same way we updated the node position, we are now going to update every edge position from that node. So let's start with the input edges. Here we are basically getting all of the IDs that are stored inside the node of these edges. We then are going to get the edge itself from the global edges array. And then finally, we just want to update the current end position of that edge to the previous position plus the delta on the mouse move. And don't forget again, the scaling. Let's do the same for the outputs. And finally, we have to update also the previous position of each of the edges every time we click on the node with the appropriate scale. So scrolling down onto the handle on mouse down node, we are also going to update the input edges positions of that node with the proper scaling. And we are going to do the same for the output edges positions of that node by updating the previous start position with the current start position times the appropriate scale. So now going back to our application, if we create a new edge and drag the node, we can see that the edge follows the node position as well as the appropriate scale. So if we zoom in, drag the board a little bit and keep dragging the nodes, you can see that the edges stay on the same positions as they should. So now what we want to do is every time the user clicks on the edge, it's going to highlight it and it's going to appear near the middle of the edge, a delete button on which the user can click and delete the edge from the global edges array. So starting with the delete icon, we are going to go back to our edge component file and we are going to add a new graphics element. And this graphics element is going to have a circle with a certain styling and the same trash icon we saw before for the delete button. The graphic itself is going to have two classes depending on if the edge is selected or not. If it is, then it's the delete class. Otherwise it's the delete hidden class. We are also going to have the on mouse down event listener, and we are going to create this handle on click delete that it's going to be simply again as the on mouse down edge it's going to be a stop propagation and we are going to trigger the parent on click delete event finally what we want to do is give a position for this graphics element and it's going to be on the middle of the edge so we are going to create a new signal for it and bear in mind that it's going to have this offset of 24 pixels if it is selected, otherwise it's going to be zero because we want to make that appearing effect. So if it is selected, it's going to go a little bit up. If it is deselected, it's going to go back to zero. We can go ahead and create the new signal here on the top and it's going to be the X and Y position of the props that's coming from the component plus the middle distance between the X. So x1 the end x minus the x0 divided by 2 so this is the middle position and we want from 
the initial position plus a little bit of offset that's corresponded to the middle position on the X and the Y values accordingly. Finally, we are just going to do a create effect. This function is the solid way to update whichever variable is inside of this function. So every time we have the props X0, X1, Y0 and Y1 updated, then it's going to run this function. And what it's going to do, it's going to calculate the new middle X and middle Y and just update it on our signal. So it then updates here on the HTML. For the CSS classes, we first start with the delete one, which is simply going to be a cursor pointer with all of the pointer events. And we're going to have a little transition effect so we can see the delete button appearing from the bottom and disappearing again. So for the delete hidden, it's the same as the delete except that it's going to have zero opacity. So we don't see the delete button and we are going to disable also the pointer event so the user cannot click even if it is hidden. Now the trash icon, it's going to be simply uh, with the following width and height and it's going to be fully white because we are going to put the circle that's going to be behind the trash can with a red color and we're just going to center the X and the Y on the zero position. And we are going to give it a radius of 14. Now going back to our board component at the top, we are going to create a new signal and it's going to be called selected edge, which will be of type string or null. The string will be the ID of the currently selected edge. Now at the bottom, we are going to update our rendering of our edge component and the selected instead of being false, it's going to be now if the selected edge is in fact of the ID of the current edge, then we want it to be true. And we are also going to update the on mouse down edge event and the on click delete event by creating a new handler for those and passing by the edge ID. So let's go ahead and create this handlers. And don't forget that we are going to receive the edge ID for each. And for the handle on mouse down edge, so every time the user clicks on the edge itself, first we are going to deselect any kind of node that might be selected. And finally, we are just going to update the selected edge with the current edge ID. So as we can see now, if we create a new edge, and simply click on it. It appears the delete button right in the middle of the edge and the edge itself will be orange and thicker. So the user knows that this is indeed the selected edge. We can go ahead and update our handle on mouse down board. So every time the user selects on the board, we are not only going to deselect the current selected node, but we are going to do the same for the edge. The same applies every time you click on a node. So go ahead and insert the same on the handle on mouse down node. Now to delete the edge, we are going to find the edge itself from the global edges array. And if the edge exists, what we first need to do is delete every reference of that edge from the node start. So first of all, we are going to get the node itself from the node start ID that's saved on the edge. And then on the node start, we are going to update the output edges ID with all of its values and filter the current values with all of the edges that are not the same as the current edge ID. So we now have a new updated array on the starting node with one less ID, which is the edge we want to delete. Do the same for the end node. So we are going to get the end node. And now instead of deleting the ID from the output edges, we are going to delete from the input edges of the end node. And finally, just delete the edge itself from the global edges array by doing a little filter from the current edges array. So now if we have multiple edges, we can select one. It will appear highlighted, it will appear the delete button, and if we click on the delete button, it will in fact delete the edge from the global edges and from each of the correspondent node edges IDs. So again, delete, and there you go. So we are basically done with our application, but there are still a few things that I do not like on that. And we are going to just fix and do some finishing touches on the application. So the first thing is if you check the edges. So for example, if we add two edges connected to this node, we can see that they kind of overlap here and it's not 
actually very pretty. We can see it better if we interline. So for example, if we click delete this edge and this edge and simply just do a cross between the edges, you can see that it's kind of weird here, right? It's not a good effect for the edge. So what we can do to solve this is go back to our edge component and let's create a new function and call it calculate offset. So this simply returns the value divided by some kind of offset we want to define. So in this case, it's a simple two, but you can go ahead and tinker with it a bit so we can get different edge curves. But for me, I think that two is the best. And now what we want to do is instead of having this um, final position minus the initial position, we are actually going to have the same difference, but with the calculated offset. So the final position minus the initial position, and in this case, divided by two. And don't forget to do the same here. So we can now see that there's a little bit of a curvature between each edge. And not only that, but if you put the nodes up here and the other one right here, you can see that we have this little uh, offset between the output and the input so it isn't so stiff. The other problem I see is if you create a new edge and you try to create a new edge from the same starting position to the same end position, we can see that it creates a new edge, but now it's not fixed to anything. So to fix this, we are going to our board component and on the handle on mouse up board, we are going to update the way we add a new edge. So first of all, let's create a new variable for the edge ID. We're going to do a little bit of a refactoring and just put that variable right here, here, and also down here. Okay, so now that we have our edge ID, what we want to do is check both for the node start and the node add. If the output edges of the node start includes this edge ID and the input edges from the node add also include this edge ID, then that means that connection is already made and we don't want to add new edges, so we are just going to set the new edge to null and just return the function because we don't want to execute any of this logic. So now if we have already a connection made, if we try to make again the same connection, it does absolutely nothing and everything stays the same, working properly. Okay guys, so that's it. You now have your own flow editor made with only SolidJS. While the flow editor we just made is very simplistic, it does have what you need to be able to start making more complex flow editors if you really need to do so. A quick reminder, if you guys want the code for this project, I'll leave the link on the description down below. And if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and hit like and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.